Mr. Minister, representatives of uh, eight ministries of the European Commission, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues and friends, uh, my name is Dimitri Karavelas, I'm the director of the Live Greece, uh, and we welcome you to this fifth ICOMPA here in Messinia. Aloha, my name is Naomi McIntosh, and I'm the chair of the International Committee on Marine Mammal Protected Areas. And we are so pleased to be here with all of you and WWF Greece to, um, for this gathering of the Fifth International Conference on Marine Mammal Protected Areas. Um, we are actually celebrating our 10th anniversary. Um, in 2009, uh, we hosted the first conference um, in my home in Hawaii. Um, and uh, it's great to have, be celebrating 10 years of, uh, of a community of marine mammal protected area uh, practitioners. So after many months of, uh, of work, uh, the moment has finally arrived to, to be able to launch this fifth ICOMPA here in Greece. Let me say we are particularly pleased and honored to be hosting uh, this conference for the first time in Greece, in fact, for the first time in Europe. And for those of you who might wonder why here, well, uh, just a few kilometers away from here is actually one of the deepest places in the Mediterranean. The Hellenic Trench is, in fact, one of the uh, amazing biodiversity hotspots, not only for this country and region, but also on a global scale. So it's most fitting, we believe, for us to be here, to be gathering here, as a global community of scientists, institutions, foundations who are interested in furthering the, the conservation agenda of, of marine mammals. Let me just say by way of introduction that I would like to thank all of the conference sponsors who have made this possible. Uh, ICOMPA from its side, the steering committee, we've worked very well together over the last few months and of course a team of people who have very enthusiastically uh, for many, many months worked to make this, this happen. As we come together and discuss the issues over the week, uh, it's very encouraging uh, and hopeful to see so many people from many different parts of the world and from so many different disciplines. Uh, and I think we really do have a, an amazing uh, critical mass of people to, to discuss uh, the challenges and the issues that we face. At the same time, I think it's important for us to see how we can address in a more urgent way 
the, the issues uh, that we have at hand and how we together as a community can work to uh, further the cause of marine mammal conservation uh, and, and the, the habitats and the places that these magnificent creatures reside in. So without further ado, let me introduce our first speaker, who is in fact a true global uh, ocean champion, uh, who's worked on these issues uh, for many, many years, and whose foundation also has supported marine mammal conservation uh, throughout the world, but also particularly here in the Mediterranean. It's our distinct pleasure and honor to welcome Prince Albert of Monaco to, to the podium. Excellencies, uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, Kaimera, uh, good morning. Uh, I think we need, to, we all need to wake up a little here, so. Um, but it's a great pleasure to be among you here this morning, to be here in uh, this beautiful place, uh, the western coast of Navarino. Cannot resist the pleasure of recounting. Uh, this legend, which some of you are undoubtedly familiar. Dionysius, the famous god of wine and pleasure, boarded a boat one day bound for the island of Naxos. He, he took on the appearance of a young mortal that day so as to, not to draw the attention of the sailors. However, during this voyage, he overheard their conversation. And they were planning to sell him as a slave in Asia. Enraged, Dionysius exacted his revenge. He changed the oars of the boat into snakes, had grapevines grow on the neck on the deck, which then took over the whole boat, and the sound of flutes appeared from nowhere. Panic stricken by these incredible tricks, the sailors leapt into the sea. They, they would have drowned had Poseidon, the, the god of sea, not decided to, to welcome them to his kingdom by turning them into dolphins. There was However, one condition from, from then on, they would help anyone at danger at sea. This story, which has various versions, exists, of course, and recounts two essential aspects. The, the closeness, even familiarity, with which human beings and dolphins, and through them all marine mammals, and, and it also foretells that our salvation, one day or another, will depend on these species. I'd like to talk about the, these two references, and that's why I'm delighted to have the opportunity to do that at this time. But let me thank the organizers of the, the International Conference on the Marine Mammal Protected Areas and the Worldwide Fund for, for Nature in Greece. And I'd also like to thank the Greek authorities, of course, uh, who are acting as their hosts. And thank you all very much. As, the owners of this beautiful place for this wonderful welcome that we've received here. The fact that this conference is being held for the first time in, in Greece and in the first time for the first time in, in the Mediterranean and, and in Europe is not only a, an opportunity to talk about the wealth and beauty of the myths of ancient Greece, but is also a unique opportunity to place greater focus on the specific situation of marine mammals in this highly important fragile sea. It will provide an opportunity, I hope, to improve their situation, both in the Mediterranean and elsewhere. We are aware of the figures concerning species which are becoming increasingly endangered, the, the status of stocks which are diminishing, especially for, for some species, such as the monk seal that we just talked about. Uh, but the monk seal in the, in the Mediterranean is uh, of course, still in danger. Above all, we were very well aware of the many dangers faced by several vulnerable species. But they are essentially the result of human activities, which are increasing as our society inevitably 
appropriates seas and oceans, coastlines, and ocean floor. Urbanization disrupts different ecosystems, destroys habitats, and increases different forms of pollution. Sea traffic increases the, the risk of collision with different vessels and also generates pollution, both, both material through, through, through uh, the process of degassing de and the release of waste and, and noise. Noise pollution, uh, marine mammals are very sensitive to that, is unfortunately also on, on the rise. Fishing sometimes creates an imbalance in, in, in the food chain and too often results in incidental catches, sadly also an ever-increasing uh, occurrence. And of course climate change increases the pressure on all these different species as it does on uh, the whole of biodiversity. All these factors often have dramatic consequences on these animal populations and, and contributes to their deterioration. However, and irrespective of the, of the responsibility of any one factor, we cannot ignore the fact that it is always human activities which weighs on marine mammals and which is largely responsible for their current situation. Such as the dolphin and cetaceans that we are seeing more and more frequently being washed up on our shores. Yet, yet these animals are very close to us. They share many characteristics with us. They are intelligent and, and altruistic, and, and sometimes even more altruistic than, than any one of us. As they come to, sometimes to save humans, while we leave whales, dolphins, and seals to die. There, there is an irony in this, in, in this story. In fact, we can talk about the, the intelligence that is the cause of some of their misfortune, as it justifies several particularly harmful activities uh, that, that, we, uh, that we undertake. Sorry. <clears throat> I am thinking, of course, of dolphinariums and shows featuring the, the, these animals. We now know how incompatible these shows are with the needs of the species on display. We are also aware of the ill treatment which too often accompanies them and of the illegal trade that they generate. I'm, I'm of course referring to their recently reported scandals where whales, killer whales, and beluga whales were found in, in captivity. Sometimes they are unweaned babies separated from their mothers and kept in very difficult and even cruel conditions. From fishing nets to dolphinariums, from land pollution to the noise of different vessels, these threats hanging over marine mammals are on the increase. These species, which are so close to us, these species that mythology presented as sisters to, to the human species, are today in jeopardy. We have an obligation to protect them, something which is only achievable through firm, determined, and ambitious action. This action, first and foremost, requires targeted, initi targeted initiatives, excuse me. initiatives at the level of states and political authorities. And in, in this context, is it, it is important to continue to heighten the awareness of states currently responsible for some of the direct tragedies that I spoke about so that they implement more stringent regulations. I'm thinking, for example, of, of the country whose withdrawal from the International Whaling Commission's uh, moratorium last December poses a problem in which would be held in, in higher esteem were it to clarify its position in regards to the protection of cetaceans despite a local tradition of which we are all very much aware. But I'm also thinking of the dolphinariums which need to be managed more efficiently. I'm thinking of the trade networks that that supply them, where the scandals that I just mentioned uh, have now come to light. Moreover, many of the businesses implicated uh, to supply dolphinariums that are in Asia, where the price of these animals is worth several million dollars. 
And in this respect, I believe that authorities need to take a firmer stand, which will lead to concrete measures for these animals. However, mammals in captivity are sadly not the only ones to suffer from the negligence, irresponsibility, and cruelty of our kind. The, the havoc wrecked by fishing nets is another well-known cause, yet we increasingly have the ability to pre prevent this, in particular by using acoustic de deterrents and fishnet markers, which must be brought into a wider spread use. In, in this regard, I believe it is essential to work with the fishing industry. The majority of those stakeholders are in favor of such precautions, but we must also ensure that we have the necessary resources for such policies by developing a binding legal arsenal, and more importantly, by implementing proper monitoring. However, the direct injuries inflicted by certain fishing techniques on marine mammals are unfortunately not the only things making them vulnerable. Other elements, which I just mentioned, have also have extremely adverse effects on their health and their survival. And in particular, all types of pollution and, and the degradation of ecosystems. These phenomena are, are obviously more difficult to address. They need to be clarified. That is why scientific knowledge, as is often the case, needs to be our first ally. That is why I welcome, for, for example, the exhaustive inventory of cetaceans undertaken in, in the Mediterranean last year by the Aquabans Agreement, whose secretariat is based in Monaco, and which will continue this summer in certain Mediterranean countries. That is why I'm, de I'm delighted that my foundation has been supporting various programs focused on marine mammals for several years now, including the monk seal, um, for which we will sign an MOU at this conference, and which will provide us with more resources to protect this emblematic and endangered species of the Mediterranean. That is why we also support, via, via our Canadian branch, a research initiative focused on the St. Lawrence beluga whale. Uh, conducted by a consortium of private labs and, and academics, its purpose is to gain a better understanding of the beluga whale by studying its behavior and habitat and monitoring its state of health, but also to offer support to, to stray or live-stranded belugas and to promote public awareness and appreciation. Beyond any specific population knowledge and above all awareness of the great damage we are inflicting on marine mammals should prompt us into adopting broader conservation measures. Obviously, these include NPAs, which feature on the agenda of this conference, of course. The benefits of marine protected areas vis-a-vis -vis marine mammals have, I believe, long been proven. And we have seen this in the Mediterranean, for example, in the Pelago Sanctuary, which was created in 1999 between the Principality of Monaco, France, and Italy, the area covering close to 88,000 square kilometers, the first transporter area of the Mediterranean, is currently home to many marine mammals, including 12 species of cetaceans. We have also witnessed this in other sanctuaries that have been established across the globe, in particular in the Southern Ocean and the South Atlantic, and this has been confirmed more widely in all MPA areas which have been set up over the last few years. This is why we need to develop and strengthen them by imposing greater control on their delineation in order to guarantee their efficiency. The very term of marine protected areas, as we know, covers very different realities as shown, for example, by their breakdown into seven categories uh, by the IUCN. The CBD COP15, which, is, which will be taking place in China next year, will, I think, provide us an excellent opportunity to clarify these objectives and strengthen the resources intended for MPAs. This meeting, however, re requires much preparation. And this is also one of the challenges, I think, of this conference. 
In addition to multilateral agreements, other strategies can be developed for the expansion of the marine protected areas. National strategies through, through the development of initiatives in waters under national jurisdiction. Multi, multilateral strategies involving a certain number of negotiations, such as the ones that are being conducted at this very moment at the UN on biodiversity beyond national jurisdictions. And also strategies involving private stakeholders through the development of appropriate tools, such as the trust fund that we have been able to set up right here in the Mediterranean uh, between Monaco, France, and Tunisia, and whose purpose uh, with public and private funds is to promote the development of MPAs and their networks. <clears throat> It is the combination of these levels, of all these stakeholders involved, and of all these resources that we will be, we will be able to progress quickly and efficiently. But it is also the mobilization of other resources and other players. And in this respect, I'd like to stress the fact that these mammals are often indicators of the general conditions of our seas, and to save them, we need to save our seas. We need to protect them from plastic pollution, which is currently one of the most serious harms that we face and which contaminates, as you know, the entire food chain. But we need to protect them from overfishing, which is destroying entire ecosystems and, and depleting certain areas of their life. We need to protect them from the effects of global warming, which is seriously jeopardizing the entire marine environment. And I hope that the IPCC's interim report devoted specifically to the oceans and the cryosphere, the, the initial project of which was put forward by my foundation and which will be presented in Monaco in uh, next September, will provide hopefully additional tools. We all need to take action to save our oceans, to save these different ecosystems, to save their fauna, and to save marine mammals. This is the, the meaning that I'd like to give to the story that I told you about, the, the god of uh, wine, at, at the beginning, of the, and the vocation of these, of these species to which we are very, very close to, to which we are naturally so sensitive, is indeed to, to save us. To save us by, by encouraging us to further protect our seas and one of the key challenges of this century, to save us by prompting us to change our attitudes in regard to our environment, to demonstrate inventiveness, determination, and responsibility. And in doing so, we can gain a deeper understanding of the ancient poet, Opian of Korikos, who is well known here, when, when he wrote that the hunting of dolphins is immoral and whoever willingly devises destruction for dolphins can no more draw nigh the gods. For equally with, with human slaughter, the gods abhor the deathly doom of the monarchs of the deep. Have a wonderful conference. Thank you very much. We'd like to thank His Highness uh, for honoring us with his presence at the conference. Uh, my name is Amalia Alberini. I'm the coordinator of the conference, and I'm also a member of the planning committee. Uh, I'm also uh, welcoming you all, our distinguished speakers. I will be this morning introducing our speakers uh, to the conference, and uh, with, the, with no further ado, I would like to welcome the Deputy Minister of the Ministry of Environment and Energy, Mr. Yorgos Dimaras. Uh, Mr. Mr. De Maras will be also assisted by Constantino Laricos, the WWF Conservation Director, with the translation. Welcome. Uh, 
εξοχότατε πρίγκιπα του Μονακό, καλώς ήρθατε στη χώρα μας. Κυρίε και κύριοι της Παγκόσμιας Οργάνωσης του ΒΕΒΕΦ, κυρίε και κύριοι σύνεδροι από όλο τον κόσμο, αναγνωρίζουμε την προσφορά σας και τη συμμετοχή σας την προστασία της άγριας ζωής στον πλανήτη Γη. Ως πρόσωπος της ελληνικής κυβέρνησης είμαι σήμερα μαζί σας για να δηλώσω το ενδιαφέρον μας για την... και την αγωνία μας για τη διατήρηση της βιοποικιλότητας της θάλασσας και ιδιαίτερα στη Μεσόγειο και στην περιοχή που είμαστε του Ιωνίου Πελάγους. Your Highness, uh, welcome to our country. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, dear delegates, representatives of uh, WWF, representatives from around the world, we are very happy to welcome you all here. Uh, as a representative of the Greek government, I would like to say that we recognize your contribution to the conservation of the global biodiversity, and especially the marine biodiversity and marine species. And I would like to Uh, relay that the Greek government is highly interested and highly concerned uh, over the future efforts for conserving this uh, valuable species. Εξαφέτα τα αρχηγεία του κράτους του Μονακό γνωρίζουμε τη συμβολή σας για τη σωτηρία των θαλάσσιων θηλαστικών, των δερφινιών, αλλά και γενικότερα της θαλάσσιας βιοπικιλότητας. Σας συγχαίρουμε για τη δράση σας αυτή και είμαστε σίγουροι ότι θα συνεχίζετε αυτό το αξιόλογο έργο σας. Your Highness, uh, the Greek government is very well aware of uh, your own contribution and the contribution of the foundation in the conservation of marine biodiversity and especially cetaceans and marine mammals in general. Uh, we would like to congratulate you on that contribution and hope that you will be continuing uh, your efforts. Κυρίες και κύριοι, βρισκόμαστε στην περιοχή του ιστορικού Ναβαρίνου όπου η Ναυμαχία του Ναυμαρίνου, όπως ξέρετε, το 1827 καταστράφει ο τουρκικός τόνος και ελευθερώθηκε η πατρίδα μας η Ελλάδα από τον τουρκικό ζυγό. Ladies and gentlemen, you are here at the historical site, next to the historical site of Navarino. Uh, Navarino is a place where in 1827 the naval battle of Navarino took place. It was a decisive win uh, of the Greeks uh, against the Ottoman Empire and it marked the, uh, the success of the Greek Revolution. In the same area, there is a place of historic Greek politics that has reached to the 1000th of Christ, that is, many centuries from today. In this uh, same area, Uh, we can find many monuments of the ancient Greek civilization, uh, some of which date back to a thousand years before Christ. In this λοιπόν, την ιστορική περιοχή, ας βρούμε τους τρόπους να προτείνουμε μέτρα για να αρχίσει η αντίστροφη πορεία από κατάσταση των ζημιών που υπέστη η θαλάσσια ζωή. So in this, uh, historical area in this historical site, let's work, all work together to find ways uh, to reverse the negative trends uh, and start uh, uh, correcting uh, the problems of the marine environment. Πολλά είδη ψαριών και μεγάλων θεταστικών κινδυνεύουν να εξαφανιστούν. Σε πολλά είδη έχουμε μεγάλη μείωση πληθυσμών από ανθρώπινες δραστηριότητες. Δελφίνια, φυσιτήρες, φόκενες που βρίσκονται στην περιοχή διατρέχουν μεγάλους κινδύνους μείωση πληθυσμού μέχρι τελικής εξαφάνισης. Uh, many species, uh, many fish species and uh, marine mammal species, uh, the, their populations are decreasing and they are threatened uh, with, ex with extinction. Viable species as uh, marine mammals, as uh, dolphins, whales, or the hubbopos uh, that we host in our country are among them. Χαιρετίζω λοιπόν το πέμπτο διεθνές συνέδριο για τις προστατευόμενες περιοχές των θαλάσσιων θηλαστικών που γίνεται στη χώρα μας. Uh, I would like to, with these words, I would like to welcome you all and uh, mark the, the beginning of this international, important international conference that takes uh, place in our country. Περιμένουμε τα πορίσματα του συνδυρίου σας για να βελτιώσουμε τα μέτρα και να λάβουμε και νέα μέτρα 
για την προστασία της θαλάσσιας ζωής και ιδιαίτερα των θαλάσσιων θηλαστικών. Uh, we will be waiting for the conclusions of this conference uh, to take them into account into developing new measures or improving the measures we already have for the conservation of the marine environment and especially marine mammals. Το Υπουργείο Περιβάλλοντος υποστηρίζει την ανάγκη προστασίας των θαλάσσιων οικοσυστημάτων και των θαλάσσιων θηλαστικών. Πρόσφατα ολοκλήρωσε την αναθεώρηση του Εθνικού Καταλόγου Περιοχών του Ευρωπαϊκού Οικολογικού Δικτύου Natura 2000 με την υπαριθμό 5743 το 2017, κοινή υπουργική απόφαση των Υπουργών Περιβάλλοντος και Αγροτικής Ανάπτυξης. Uh, the Ministry of Environment uh, supports all efforts for the conservation of the marine environment. Uh, characteristically, to very recently, uh, it endorsed a new network of marine protected areas under the uh, regulation of the Natura Regulation of the European Commission with the Common Ministerial Decisions 5743. Ναυτή. Την απόφαση, η θαλάσσια έκταση της χώρας που καλύπτεται πλέον από το δίκτυο Natura 2000 ανέρχεται στο 22,3% σε σχέση με το 6,12% που υπήρχε μέχρι πρόσφατα, δηλαδή μέχρι το 2017. With this decision, the, the part of the country's area that is now under protection under the Natura 2000 uh, network of the European Union Uh, amounts to 22.3% of the country's area, which is a huge increase compared to the 6.12% uh, that stood until 2017. Εκτός από αυτό, με νόμο το 2018, όλες οι προστατευόμενες περιοχές της χώρας βρίσκονται υπό την εποπτεία ενός φορέα διαχείρισης. Further to that, uh, with the recent legislation, Uh, all protected areas of a country, there is the legislation voted in 2018, this year, uh, all the protected areas of the country are under the management from a, a designated uh, management body. Αντιλαμβάνεται κανείς την προτεραιότητα που έχει δώσει η σημερινή κυβέρνηση στην προστασία των θαλάσσιων προστατευόμενων περιοχών. It is easy for anyone to, to understand the importance that this government is giving to the protection of uh, the marine environment and marine protected areas. Επιπλέον, προχωράει το έργο των ειδικών περιβαλλοντικών μελετών, σχεδίων προεδρικών διαταγμάτων και σχεδίου διαχείρισης για το σύνολο των περιοχών του δικτύου Natura 2000 στη χώρα προϋπολογισμού 17,5 εκατομμύρια ευρώ. At the same time, we are uh, beginning to implement a 17.5 million euro program which will see all the necessary environmental studies, uh, presidential degrees for the designation of protected areas and management plans Uh, been in place for, for all protected areas of the country. Ανοίγει ο δρόμο για, για μια νέα ολοκληρωμένη και αποτελεσματική στρατηγική προσέγγιση αηφορική διαχείριση του φυσικού περιβάλλοντο και προστασία τη βιοποικιλότητα. With these measures, we are paving the way uh, for a new strategy for the conservation of, of the Greek environment and for a new approach to the sustainable management of resources. Οι μελέτε αυτέ έχουν σκοπό την προστασία και τη διατήρηση των οικοσυστημάτων και των ειδών χλωρίδα και πανίδα που υπάρχουν στι περιοχέ του δικτύου Natura 2000 τόσο χερσαίων όσο και θαλάσσιων. Uh, all these measures target the, uh, the conservation of viable ecosystems, the ones that are under the Natura 2000 uh, network, and also for all the species uh, of the fauna and flora that are hosted in these areas. Διασφαλίζουν έτσι τη βιώσιμη ανάπτυξη των τοπικών κοινωνιών αλλά και την κάλυψη των ευρωπαϊκών υποχρεώσεων της χώρας. And through these measures we are uh, guaranteeing the sustainable development also of local communities in these areas but also uh, meeting all the requirements of the European uh, Union legislation. Το έργο των ειδικών περιβαλλοντικών μελετών για τον σχεδίων διαχείρισης σε όλες τις περιοχές του Διευθύνου Νατούρα 2000 Έρχεται να καλύψει χρόνια συλλήψει καθορισμού χρήσεων γη και δραστηριοτήτων στι προστατευόμενε περιοχέ. Αποτελεί ένα πρωτοφανέ έργο για τα ελληνικά δεδομένα. It is a, a project that is a very, very innovative and of a scale never seen before in the country. Η σημερινή κυβέρνηση όχι μόνο δεν φοβάται να λάβει καθοριστικές 
για ζητήματα φύσης αποφάσεις, αλλά τη συλλοβεί κιόλας μέσα σε λίγα μόνα χρόνια. Uh, the present government is uh, not only is not afraid to take uh, decisive uh, uh, decisions uh, over the conservation of, of the natural environment, but also moves quickly into their implementation as well within a few years. Επίσης, υπό το πλαίσιο εφαρμογή τη θαλάσσια στρατηγική του Υπουργείου Περιβάλλοντο, έχει υποβάλει την έκθεση αξιολόγηση τη κατάσταση των θαλάσσιων υδάτων τη χώρα. Also, under the framework of the European Marine uh, Strategy, uh, the, the Greek government has already submitted uh, its report on the, on the state of, of the Greek seas. Αυτή αποτελεί υποχρέωση τη χώρα μα στο πλαίσιο εφαρμογή τη οδηγία πλαίσιο 2008 κάθετο 56 για τη θαλάσσια στρατηγική του νόμου 3983 του 2011, με το οποίο εναρμονίστηκε. This is a. Sorry, but, uh, this is a. Uh, uh, the country is. Uh... <laughs> It has to fulfill, this is uh, towards the fulfillment of, of the country's uh, uh, under the legislation, under the European framework of marine strategy, of the the European framework for the for the marine strategy 2008-56, uh, and it comes to also fulfill. Ε, η οικοσυστημική προσέγγιση που κρίνεται αναγκαία από την Ευρωπαϊκή και Εθνική Νομοθεσία για τη διατήρηση της καλής κατάστασης των θαλάσσιων υδάτων παρακολουθεί τις ανάγκες της παρούσας γενιάς και ενεργεί με γνώμονα το συμφέρον των μελλοντικών γενεών. Το οικοσύστημα που θα αντιμετωπίσουμε με τις δημιουργίες της Ευρωπαϊκής Ένωσης Uh, sees to our caring not only for the present state of, of the environment, of the marine environment, but also for the needs of the future generations. The protection of the natural ecosystem of our country and the maintenance of biodiversity is a part of the protection of the health and the well-being of our citizens, provided that the waters of Greece have a greater economic and economic value beyond tropical activities, the food, the energy, the tourism, and so on, but also the protection. The conservation of the of the ecosystems, the marine ecosystems of the country, and of the biodiversity that is hosted in them, is not only an environmental need, but it is also a social need, and it's acting to the benefit of citizens because there are many activities uh, that are strongly related to the marine environment, such as fisheries, uh, aquaculture, tourism, and so on. Επιπλέον, το Υπουργείο Περιβάλλοντος έχει αναλάβει τον καθορισμό των προδιαγραφών και του περιεχομένου των σχεδίων δράσης ειδών και τύπων οικοτόπων κατ' εφαρμογή της παραγράφης του άρθρου 20 του νόμου 39-37 του 11. At the same time, our ministry uh, is undertaking all necessary steps to define uh, the content and the process for, uh, for preparing the necessary action plans for species, uh, both flora and fauna, according to current legislation. Σε αυτό το πλαίσιο, μεταξύ διαφόρων ειδών έχουν προκυριθεί σχέδια δράσης για διάφορα θαλάσσια θηλαστικά, το Ρινοδέρτινο, τη Φώκια και τη Φώκενα. In this framework and among many species, a number of marine mammals have been chosen as pilots for the preparation of conservation action plans. Among them, species of dolphins and the hubbubbubbots. Υπήρξε σχετική πρωτοβουλία πρόσφατη από το Υπουργείο Περιβάλλοντος σχετικά με την προστασία των φυσικήρων και υλοποιούμε σε συνεργασία με το Υπουργείο Ναυτιλίας και Μισιωτικής Πολιτικής ένα τέτοιο σχέδιο. There has also been a very recent uh, initiative from the Ministry of Environment in collaboration to the Ministry of Shipping uh, for managing uh, ship strikes and the, and the conflicts on, on cetaceans and the impacts of cetaceans. Η πρωτοβουλία προωθεί τι απαραίτητε διαδικασίε για την υποβολή τεχνική έκθεση αναφορικά με την ανάγκη προστασία των φυσικήρων από προσκρούσει με πλοία στη θαλάσσια περιοχή τη ελληνική τάφου μέσω τη υιοθέτηση συγκεκριμένων μέτρων και πρακτικών. Αυτό το process και αυτή η συνεργασία μεταξύ των δύο ministries προωθεί την προσπάθεια για το τεχνικό σχέδιο για να αναλύσει την μαγνητική και την ανάγκη. Uh, of the of the issue of uh, ship strikes and to also propose measures for its uh, mitigation. The Turgumes established the symphonies for the preparation of the ship in the Mar of the Mediterranean and the specific zone of the Atlantic. And all this is, of course, within the framework of the Acabams uh, Agreement. The symphonies of this project. 
στη μείωση των απειλών κατά των Κεταϊδών, στα ύδατα της Μεσογείου και της Μαύρης Θάλασσας και στη βελτίωση των γνώσεών μας για τα ζώα αυτά και αποτελεί πρώτη συμφωνία που δεσμεύει τις χώρες δύο υπέρ υποπεριφερειών επιτρέποντας να συνεργαστούν για ένα θέμα κοινού ενδιαφέροντος. As you all know, this agreement foresees the, uh, the study and the adoption of measures uh, for the mitigation of threats uh, towards uh, cetaceans and marine mammals, and it is the first uh, agreement between states uh, that brings in contact these two sensitive subregions uh, and allows them to cooperate on this uh, important issue. The κύρωση τη συμφωνία αυτή προωθείται από το Υπουργείο Περιβάλλοντο μέσω σχεδίου νόμου. Το σχέδιο νόμου βρίσκεται ήδη σε κύκλο υπογραφών, δηλαδή περιμένουμε σε λίγου μήνε. Αυτό να έχει κατατηθεί και να ψηφιστεί στην Ελληνική Βουλή. Uh, the Greek government uh, already uh, promotes the voting of a legislation uh, that will adopt uh, the Akobams Treaty officially uh, by the country. Κυρίε και κύριοι, εύχομαι να έχετε καλέ συνεδρίε και καλά αποτελέσματα. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish you all to have a good conference, uh, productive sessions and uh, useful conclusions. Εύχομαι επίση να επιδράσουν οι ενέργειέ σα ώστε να αλλάξουν οι πολιτικέ προστασίε τη φύση σε κάθε χώρα σε όλο τον πλανήτη. Uh, I also wish you success with your efforts uh, so that uh, policies for the conservation of marine mammals change in every country around this planet. Ο πλανήτη γη ζει σε μια πολύ κρίσιμη περίοδο και θα έλεγα ότι χρειαζόμαστε ένα ευρύ παγκόσμιο στρατηγική, στρατηγικό σχέδιο επιβίωση του ανθρώπου αλλά και προστασία εν γέννη τη ζωή στον πλανήτη. Uh, our planet is going through a very critical period uh, and I would say that we are in urgent need of uh, a global wide strategic change uh, to save all forms of life around the planet. Το χρωστάμε στι επόμενε γενιέ των ανθρώπων αλλά και σε όλων των άλλων ζωικών ειδών. Uh, we owe that to the next generations of people, but also uh, to all the species that surround us. Είναι ζήτημα ηθικής ευθύνης απέναντι στο θαύμα της ζωής, απέναντι σε αυτό το σπάνιο θαύμα που συνέβη πάνω στο πλανήτη Γη. Ευχαριστώ πάρα πολύ. It is a, it is a, it is a, a moral obligation against the, the miracle of life around the planet. Thank, Thank you, you very much. I'd like to welcome our next opening speaker from the cabinet member of the Ministry of Greek uh, Foreign Affairs, Mrs. Maria Lenturi. Welcome. Εξοχότατε πρίγκιπα του Μονακό, κύριοι Υφυπουργέ, ε, κύριοι Γενικοί Διευθυντέ τη ΒΒΕΦ και ΒΒΕΦ Ελλάδο και τη Διεθνού Επιτροπή για τα Θαλάσσια Θεραστικά και τι Θαλάσσιε Προστατευόμενε Περιοχέ, κυρίε και κύριοι επίσημοι προσκεκλημένοι, κυρίε και κύριοι. Γεια σα, Ρίνι Χάινε, Πρίντ τη Μόνακο, Μίστερ Βάιτ Μίνιστερ, Γενικό Διευθυντή τη ΒΒΕΦ και ΒΒΕΦ Γκρίζ, Δυστυχημένοι Γκρίζ, κυρίε και Θα ήθελα καταρχά να ευχαριστήσω θερμά τη ΒΒΕΦ Ελλάδο για την ευγενική τη πρόσκληση για συμμετοχή του Υπουργείου Εξωτερικών στη σημερινή συνδιάσκεψη. Δυστυχώ, η παρουσία μου στο Συμβούλιο Εξωτερικών Υποθέσεων τη Ευρωπαϊκή Ένωση στο Λουξεμβούργο δεν καθιστά δυνατή τη συμμετοχή μου σε αυτή τη σημαντική παγκόσμια συμβέλεια τη πρωτοβουλία σα. I would uh, like to first warmly uh, thank WWF Greece for its uh, kind uh, invitation. Uh, for the participation of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs into this, uh, into this conference. Uh, unfortunately, uh, my presence, i.e. the Minister's presence, uh, in the Council of uh, Foreign Affairs of the European Union in Luxembourg uh, does not allow me to be uh, with you in this uh, important international event. Συγχαίρω τόσο τη ΒΒΕΦ Ελλάδος όσο και τη Διεθνή Επιτροπή για τα Θαλάσσια Θηλαστικά και τις Θαλάσσιες Προστατευόμενες Περιοχές για τη διοργάνωση της συνδιάσκεψης. I would like to congratulate WWF Greece and the International Committee for Marine Mammal Protected Areas uh, for organizing this international conference. Η Ελλάδα, μέσω των συναρμοδίων Υπουργείων και Φορέων, καθώς και των μη κυβερνητικών οργανώσεων, είναι σταθερά προσιλωμένη στις διεθνείς προσπάθειες για την αντιμετώπιση των επιπτώσεων της κλιματικής αλλαγής. 
uh, Greece through the work of all uh, relating uh, ministries and entities as well as through the work of uh, non-government organizations uh, remains focused in international efforts for the uh, for countering the, the impacts of uh, climate change. Είναι φυσικό η χώρα μα λόγω του θαλάσσιου περιβάλλοντο στο οποίο βρίσκεται αλλά και τη πολιτιστική τη παράδοση και κληρονομιά να αποδίδει έμφαση στην προστασία των φωτέρων. Uh, naturally, our country, uh, because of uh, the importance of the marine environment which surrounds it, but also because of its cultural heritage, uh, gives, emphasis, uh, gives important emphasis on the conservation of both. Από την πλευρά μα, το Υπουργείο Εξωτερικών προγραμματίζει διεθνή διάσκεψη για την κλιματική αλλαγή και την πολιτιστική κληρονομιά των ερχόμενων ημών. Uh, from our side, the, Minister, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs is planning for an international conference on climate change and cultural heritage uh, the coming June. Τα τελευταία χρόνια η Ελλάδα, με την ενεργητική και πολυδιάστατη εξωτερική τη πολιτική, έχει προωθήσει με συγκεκριμένε πρωτοβουλίε σε διμερέ, τριμερέ και πολυμερέ επίπεδο. Την εδραίωση τη ειρήνη και τη σταθερότητα στην ευρύτερη περιοχή μα. Uh, the last years, uh, Greece, with its uh, energetic and multidimensional foreign uh, policy, has promoted uh, specific initiatives at a bilateral, trilateral and international uh, level, uh, the funding of peace and stability in a wider area. Ω αποτέλεσμα των άγνων αυτών προσπαθειών, η χώρα μα αναγνωρίζεται διεθνώ ω πόλο σταθερότητα και ασφάλεια. Ιδιαίτερα στα Βαλκάνια αλλά και στην ευρύτερη περιοχή τη Ανατολική Μεσογείου. Uh, as a result of these important efforts, our country is internationally recognized uh, as a, a factor of stability and security, especially in the Balkans and in the area of the Eastern Mediterranean. Η προστασία του περιβάλλοντο αποτελεί ένα απόσπαστο μέρο τη λεγόμενη θετική ατζέντα που η Ελλάδα προωθεί μέσω αυτών των συνεργασιών τη σε περιφερειακό και παγκόσμιο επίπεδο. The conservation of the environment uh, is an integral part of this so-called positive agenda that Greece is trying to promote uh, through its collaborations at a regional and international level. Στο Υπουργείο Εξωτερικών λειτουργεί διεύθυνση προστασίας περιβάλλοντος, η οποία σε συνεργασία με τις λοιπές υπηρεσίες του Υπουργείου προωθεί δράσεις προς αυτή την κατεύθυνση, ενώ η ειδική νομική υπηρεσία του Υπουργείου συμμετέχει συστηματικά σε συναντήσεις των συμβαλλωμένων μερών και ομάδων εργασίας των αντίστοιχων διεθνών συμβάσεων, συμπεριλαμβανομένη και τη Διεθνού Σύμβαση για τη Βιολογική Ποικιλότητα. Uh, at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, uh, a directorate of the Conservation of the Environment is operating, uh, which in uh, collaboration with uh, the other services of the Ministry is trying to promote uh, actions to this direction. At the same time, the Ministry's legal service uh, is uh, actively participating in all the meetings of the parties uh, and all the working groups of the parties of the international, of the international uh, treaties, uh, including the International Treaty for Biodiversity. Κυρίες και κύριοι, η συμμετοχή στη σημερινή διάσκεψη ειδικών, εκπροσώπων κρατικών φορέων, μη κυβερνητικών οργανώσεων και εκπροσώπων του ιδιωτικού τομέα από 40 περίπου χώρες, αποδεικνύει ότι το ειδικό θέμα της προστασίας των θαλάσσιων θηλαστικών που θα συζητήσετε σήμερα, είναι ζήτημα που απαιτεί τη συνεργασία όλων μας ανεξαιρέτως, προκειμένου να σχεδιαστούν μεταξύ άλλων πρακτικές μέθοδοι για τη δημιουργία, την παρακολούθηση και τη διαχείριση θαλάσσιων προστατευόμενων περιοχών, τόσο στην περιοχή μας, όσο και σε παγκόσμιο επίπεδο. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the participation in, uh, in this conference of experts, representatives of uh, governments, non-governmental organizations and representatives of the private sector from 40 countries uh, proves that the, this special issue of the conservation of marine mammals that we will be discussing these coming days uh, is an issue that uh, re requests the, co the cooperation of everyone, uh, irrespective, um, irrespectively of where it comes from, uh, in order for measures to be uh, planned and for practical methods for the establishment, monitoring and management of marine protected areas, so much in our area as well as in uh, global level. Η αποτελεσματική δράση ξεκινάει από την κοινή αντίληψη ότι όλοι είμαστε χρήσιμοι, θα έλεγα απαραίτητοι, σε αυτή την προσπάθεια. Uh, impactful actions uh, begin from our own common understanding that we are all useful and uh, necessary in this effort. Αυτό συγκρατώ ως βασικό μήνυμα της σημερινής διάσκεψης και εύχομαι αυτή να οδηγήσει σε συγκεκριμένα μέτρα και πρωτοβουλίες προς υλοποίηση των κοινών μας στόχων. Uh, this is what I take out as a main message of, the, of this conference. 
uh, and I wish that it will lead to particular measures and initiatives uh, for the implementation of our common goals. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'd like to welcome our last ministerial representative, Ms. Fanicelli, the Secretary General's Cabinet from the Ministry of Maritime Affairs and Insular Policy. Ms. Tellu. His Highness Prince Albert II of Monaco, Mr. Yorgos de Maras, Mr. Maria Le, Mrs. Maria Leduti, Mr. Carmenu Bella, Mr. Marco Lobertini, ladies and gentlemen, with the following thoughts, I would like to express, on behalf of the Secretary General of the Ministry of Maritime Affairs and Insurance Policy, Mr. Dionysis de Boneras, that it is a great honor to be invited here at this exceptional conference. Firstly, let me congratulate the World Wide Fund for Nature and the International Committee of Marine Mammal Protected Areas for this initiative that brings the marine mammal scientific community closer. And as this meeting is held and focused on the Mediterranean Sea, as quoted the new Silk Road, it is of exceptional importance for Greece that has one of the largest fleets in the world and the Greek shipping is a vital economic generator of the national economy. Ladies and gentlemen, Greece, as a traditional maritime country, investing equally to shipping and maritime and coastal tourism, at this time is contemplating a policy that attributes emphasis on the adoption of appropriate measures at European and global level aimed at the protection of the marine environment. The two ministries, namely the Ministry of Maritime Affairs and Insurance Policy and the Ministry of Environment and Energy, have established a structured operation through regular meetings as an expression of the existing political will to examine the steps to be taken for the protection of the marine mammals especially for preventing collisions with ships and cetaceans. Aiming at the protection of the marine environment, the shipping industry is already, is already involved in the process of transition to which over to the compliant fuels which are the 0.5% low sulfur fuel oil. The shipping industry has also pioneered initiatives like Helmepa, which have spread all over the world to the various nations, like NAMEPA, which is the North American Marine Environment Protection Association, and like SAIMEPA, etc. Regarding the shipping policy, the Greek state is complying and supports all IMO regulations. But what is also worthwhile mentioning is that in 2018, the Greek government adopted the new law 4546-2018 for the marine spatial planning. This new law states that the goal is the sustainable development with the synergies of the ecological, environmental, economic, social and cultural parameters and its implementation includes, in the area, the protected areas for biodiversity in the shipping routes. And it is a challenge that the marine spatial planning has to be planned until 21st of March 2021. It is a challenge for the Greek state because of the existence of too many stakeholders. But marine spatial planning is also a sine qua non condition, a vessel through the road to sustainable blue growth. The result will depend both on the quality of the strategic and the intention of the stakeholders. And ladies and gentlemen, 
The ecosystem-based management is the management which brings all stakeholders together. If we, as a society, are willing to achieve efficiency and effectiveness in the management of the marine environment, is to understand that each side, state organizations, the scientific community, users, civilians, and each one who has interests that affect the marine environment should consider their own objective objectives with respect to a larger set of objectives. If we, as society, wish economic, social, and ecological benefits to occur simultaneously, it is to understand that each one has the innate responsibility for the actions taken. Nikos Kazantzakis, in his book, Salvatore's Day, in Greek, Askitiki, writes, must love responsibility. You say, I, I alone, have the obligation to save the earth. If it's not safe, it is my fault. Ladies and gentlemen, Indeed, all of us here are in nine, and we have the obligation to build a sustainable tomorrow for the future generations. I wish you good luck to your further fruitful activities, and thank you very much for your attention. Our next speaker, the European Union Commissioner for the Environment, Maritime Affairs, Maritime of Maritime Affairs and Fisheries, Mr. Car Carmen Uvela. Uh, he will be addressing the audience through a video message. He wasn't able to attend physically this meeting, but a number of European Commission officers, representatives, are going to attend and actively contribute to the conference. Mr. Carmen Uvela. Ladies and gentlemen, as European Commissioner for Environment, Maritime Affairs and Fisheries and the Maltese, it is my pleasure to warmly welcome you to the Mediterranean coast, one of our planet's precious biodiversity hotspots, which, despite its relatively small size, is home to 28 species of marine mammals. Marine mammals play an important ecological role in the oceans. However, Economic activities have increasingly invaded their realm. These activities have degraded precious habitats over the last decades. Today, seven of the 12 marine mammals regularly in the Mediterranean are listed as threatened on the IUCN's Red List. International cooperation is crucial to improving our seas as marine habitats. It is at the heart of European Union environmental and maritime policies which protect marine mammals. The Habitats Directive, the cornerstone of the European Union's nature conservation policy, seeks to provide effective protection to cetaceans and seals in EU waters. This is especially through the designation and sound management of marine protected areas. The area covered by marine protected areas in Europe has almost doubled in the last six years. It now reaches more than 10% of European Union seas, and it keeps increasing primarily thanks to our Natura 2000 network. Remember, this is the largest coordinated network of protected areas in the world. It currently covers more than half a million square kilometers of our seas. Recently, France designated the largest marine Natura 2000 site so far in the European Union. It stretches over 62,320 square kilometers in the Bay of Biscay. This offers strong protection for the harbor, porpoises and the bottlenose dolphins roaming the area. We have been supporting at least 17 life projects on the conservation of marine mammals. Cyclades Life, led by one of the hosts of this conference, WWF Greece, elaborated a new marine park. It is based 
of the Natura 2000 site of Gyros. Its aim is to protect the endangered monk sea. This is done while also supporting local communities and sustainable fisheries. Marine mammals also benefit from the European Union's flagship Marine Strategy Framework Directive. Achieving good environmental status of European Union marine waters by the year 2020 is the objective. This is partly through a network of marine protected areas. These will reduce the main pressures and impacts such as contamination or underwater noise. Our common fisheries policy embraces the ecosystem approach and so does the Maritime Spatial Planning Directive. New tools and synergies are being developed through these policies. For example, to address the incidental catch of marine mammals in fishing gear or the effects of over-exploitation of food webs that support these species. We are engaged to fully implement these ambitious policies, shaping a steady path to sustainability. This also contributes to our efforts to reach the UN Sustainable Development Goals. I will conclude by wishing you every success with the conference and I will be looking forward to your recommendations on how to make our seas a better place for these iconic animals. Our last opening speaker for the session will be uh, the WWF Director General, uh, WWF International Director General, Mr. Marco Lambertini. Marco was not able to attend physically and he'll be also addressing uh, the audience through remote connection. Welcome, Marco. Thank you very much. Just let me check if you can hear me. Yes. And you can see me as well. Yes. Great. Excellent. So, first of all, um, your Serene Highness and, and distinguished guests from the Greek government and the European Union and friends and colleagues, first thing to say is apologies. Apologies because I was really looking forward to, uh, to come and, and be there in person. I had my ticket booked, my bag packed. I even put my binoculars in the bag because I'm a lover of the ocean, but I'm also a lover of bird watching. And now is the spring migration in Greece, so I was really looking forward to be with you. But unfortunately, sometimes things don't go as planned. Uh, we're very proud, as Dimitri said in his opening, at WWF, um, of co-hosting this uh, uh, conference on uh, uh, marine mammals protected areas with the International Committee. And, uh, and uh, let me just say, I, I don't know anyone that had the fortune of having a close encounter with the marine mammal of any kind and not being charmed and uh, um, fascinated and mesmerized for life. Seals, whales, dolphins, uh, all marine mammals are uh, the equivalent of tigers, elephants, pandas on land. They are magnetic, they are iconic, uh, they are fascinating, they are moving, uh, strong emotions, and paradoxically, like most of the cases of the species that we most love, uh, they are also incredibly threatened. I don't need to tell you that you are experts on this, but obviously there is an interesting evolution about the threats to marine mammals over the centuries. Initially, uh, uh, in, in, in the early uh, uh, 19th century, the real threat was uh, persecution, persecution for commercial purposes, as you know, and who has been uh, having the, 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 the interesting experience of visiting the coast of New England, uh, where the whole industrial commercial whaling started really, uh, or the coast of Patagonia or many other places in the world where you, step, you can still see the remnants uh, uh, of the machineries uh, used to uh, boil the fat uh, of these animals, understand that at the time uh, the pressure must have been immense. Many mammals have been recovering in many places after that, uh, but today we're facing a very different uh, altogether issue. On one hand, the, the, there is an issue of collateral indirect damage related to a lot of the activities that human society and our development model has, has developed in the ocean. 
uh, a, a blue economy that is already existing but it is now sustainable with the help of the ocean itself. Overfishing, bycatch, uh, chemical pollution, uh, 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 ghost nets, uh, abandoning the sea, and increasingly, as uh, Serena has mentioned, uh, plastic. And, and I would have loved to hear from you experts what you think about the uh, acceleration of the threat from plastic to uh, cetaceans, particularly uh, whales. And uh, as, as I believe and I, I feel that they could become very soon probably one of the major threats uh, in terms of uh, direct impact on um, populations. And of course, when you talk about threats from animal animals, we cannot shy away from mentioning the overarching threat of climate change. The warming of these temperatures, uh, the change in salinity as a, as a consequence of the melting of the, of the ice caps, uh, the impact of uh, uh, climate change on the uh, pH, on the uh, acidification of the ocean itself, uh, on top, of course, are uh, the impact on current disruption and, and many other implications uh, of our changing climate. And for that, uh, I can also not mention uh, the, the concern that the WWF has about uh, the Greek government plans of uh, allowing exploration and, and, and exploitation of Oil field, oil and gas fields in the in the territorial waters of Greece. Um, we would love to uh, continue to discuss with the government how we can uh, reconsider that uh, approach and that vision, uh, a vision that would threaten, would put at risk uh, uh, the ocean ecosystem, but also uh, we believe a large a, a, a sectors of the economy of the country, of course, including tourism, and to the oil companies bidding for these uh, uh, exploitation concessions, Total, Repsol, ExxonMobil, Edison, but also uh, uh, Greek companies like uh, uh, Energy and, uh, and Hellenic Petroleum, um, all to show their serious commitment um, to the below to degree target agreed in Paris. And then, of course, when we talk about marine mammals, we have to talk about uh, uh, spatial protection. And here we've been discussing already, and we heard several times the reference to marine protected areas. When we talk about protected areas in general, for me, it's, it's one of the most uh, outstanding and exciting uh, successes of the environmental movement over the last uh, 30, 40, decade, 40 uh, years. This is something that we all experience in our careers, young conservationists fighting for uh, uh, the establishment of protected areas and, and, and reserves on land and at sea, uh, and, and seeing an exponential progression, which has now led us to almost 15% of protected land uh, and, uh, as you know, 8% of protected ocean. This is far, far from where we should be, but it's still major progress. And particularly in the ocean, we've seen an acceleration on protection uh, in the very recent years. It also is an indicator of the growth of the ocean as uh, uh, a relevant topic to the debate uh, at the political level, societal level, and also increasingly corporate level as well. So this is all very exciting. But as I said, uh, on one hand, we know this is not enough, uh, and so we need to continue to push hard for more protection. Uh, but on the other hand, also there is a, a more subtle uh, story when you look into the details. I was attending a, a beautiful event, and thank you, uh, your Serena Inas, for organizing the Blue, uh, the Monaco Blue Initiative, uh, because um, it brought together really a very interesting uh, multi-stakeholder crowd to discuss the health of the ocean. During that event, a couple of weeks ago in Monaco, uh, data on the Mediterranean were presented. And although the Mediterranean marine protected areas coverage uh, sounds uh, in line with the global uh, average uh, of about 7%, um, when you look into the details, uh, there is another dimension that comes, uh, it becomes clear. On one hand, there is the issue of resourcing, and, and the data that we're presenting there show that only 12% of, of the marine protected areas in, in the Mediterranean have enough resources that allow good management. The second part is that uh, a very small percentage of this uh, 7% is actually a no-take, no-fishing uh, area. And, and we know that no-take, no-fishing is a fundamental component of a good network of protected areas. 
fact, that percentage is only 0.01% in the Mediterranean, which is, I think, uh, completely unacceptable and uh, against uh, any scientific evidence. There is, however, an exciting opportunity. I'm going to conclude on this because um, um, Mr. S Mr. Dimaras uh, uh, and also Ms. M Ms. Lentudi uh, from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Mr. Dimaras from the Ministry of Environment and Energy mentioned earlier, uh, we have a, a, a responsibility and an opportunity uh, at the same time to uh, increase the conservation of the ocean. Increase our efforts. One of these efforts is obviously about protected area, special conservation. In 2020, we're going, going to have a special opportunity when the world will discuss and focus on sustainable development uh, in many different ways. The national determined contribution on climate change, the Paris Agreement uh, of the government will be presented, uh, and that will be an important test of our commitment against climate change. Uh, the, uh, a number of indicators of the sustainable development goals will also expire and will have to be discussed and renewed. Uh, and for us, and particularly relevant to marine protected areas, uh, the, uh, the uh, discussion on uh, biodiversity, conservation of biodiversity beyond national jurisdiction will hopefully come to an end. And the Convention on Biodiversity, which was one of the three sister conventions approved in Rio in '92, supposed to be the nature convention, like uh, UNFCCC was the, the Convention on Climate, uh, would come to a complete renewal of its target for 2020. Uh, sorry, 2030, post 2020. This is a fantastic opportunity to, to do a number of things. First of all, to redesign, redefine a narrative that puts nature conservation on land and in the ocean uh, at the center of sustainable development. Uh, and recognizing that nature is indispensable for our own well-being, our own livelihood, our own economy, our own social stability, and health and happiness, why not? Uh, and nature is also fundamental to deliver a number of social uh, commitments and, and deliver on social challenges from poverty alleviation to health uh, for all uh, that are embedded in the sustainable development goals. A narrative that looks at nature conservation and therefore also marine protected areas, not as something that is set aside uh, and, uh, and uh, an anti development, but something that is perhaps even a different way of using uh, nature to look from that perspective, because of the immense services that nature and protected areas are generating to our own society. Of course, alongside the very important argument mentioned earlier of the moral responsibility, responsibility that we have uh, to coexist uh, with the amazing diversity of life uh, of our planet. The second opportunity in 2020 is to attach to this narrative a set of really ambitious science-based targets that uh, put us on a course to deliver a really serious nature action agenda to 2030. Uh, we have not been ambitious enough. We have not been following the science enough in now returning to protect nature until now. 2020 is the last opportunity, and science is telling us that many of the natural systems are reaching a tipping point beyond which they will change state. It will be extremely difficult to reverse in the short term. So 2020 is a fundamental opportunity to redefine the value of nature conservation, moral but also economic and social, an opportunity to set strong targets, and scientists are telling us that 30% is the minimum that we need to protect in the ocean, and even more so uh, on land, and, uh, and, and, and green the key drivers of nature loss that today are the main impact on the natural systems and could be redefined and, and organized in a way uh, which is more sustainable, uh, from agricultural land to fisheries at sea, infrastructure, uh, and for forestry, and of course, the whole issue of financial flows, green economy, blue economy, and uh, green and sustainable finance. So this is an opportunity that we cannot miss, and I hope you as a community uh, passionate about the sea and marine mammals can join forces around what we call in WBF a new deal for nature and for people that will seal a strong commitment in 2020, as comprehensive, as ambitious, uh, as the Paris Agreement on Climate, and together with that, climate and nature loss uh, really address the current ecological crisis. But we can, as this generation, 
turned into a fantastic opportunity to really deliver, uh, deliver sustainable development. I'll stop here. Thank you very much for uh, listening to me in, in, in via, via, via the video link. And so sorry not to be with you again. And I wish you a fantastic, fantastic conference. Thank you very much. Thank you to all our opening speakers. Uh, at this point, before we proceed with uh, the normal conference session program, I'd like to introduce the conference planning committee, a small group of people who have been instrumental in making this conference happen. Uh, the president, the chair of the uh, Marine Mammal Committee, uh, Naomi McIntosh, uh, Giuseppe Notabardo Lodishara, the co-chair of the IUCN MMPA task force, Spiros Cotomatas from WWF Greece, my colleague, Lars Bader from the University of Hawaii, and uh, Brad Barr from uh, the International Committee of Marine Mammal Protected Areas. I thank you, the Program Planning Committee, for, uh, for this uh, long-standing endeavor. Some, a couple of uh, daily announcements uh, before we proceed. I just want to um, wanna highlight the conference has a very rich content. Uh, it starts from every morning, uh, from today, Monday through Friday. Uh, we're planning to have 25 sessions, very interactive. Uh, we're happy that we're going to have plenty of opportunities of discussion, not just presentations. We're expecting about 200 participants from 35 countries. You're all here. Um, if you look at your right, your left, we're all here. Um, so please uh, respect the timing. Uh, I know today we weren't that good with 